any enabling, massively enabled te technology comes risk. And so there is a subset of work in this area which is particularly challenging because what we are doing is we are growing people in order to be able to counter those people who use this environment to do bad things. Now this environment is quite wide. You can, you can stop people doing bad things to your critical national infrastructure. You can stop people doing bad things to your, to your government. But equally, all the way down, you can stop people doing bad things to a small and medium enterprise. So actually, depending on what environment you want to work in, you can work in any environment. You can work in a small, you know, for a small company, you can work for, for a large company. So actually, the opportunities there are really, really quite wide. So we do get some students who come to us who have a very good understanding of what they're getting into. We get some students that come to us not having such a rounded understanding because they've seen programs like CSI, NCIS, they think forensics is fun and we spend the first year actually telling them and, and disabusing them of the myth and talking to them about actually what forensics really is, about the fact that it's good science, about training them to be scientists and about the difference between fiction that you see on telly and actually what really happens in a lab. But it's stimulating, the students enjoy it, they get to do some really, really exciting stuff. And at the end of the day, it's producing students that are employable. It's helping companies give them the need that they need. And we get companies coming back to us year on year because of that. But we do have to spend a bit of time at the beginning educating students about actually what forensics, what cybersecurity really means. And I've always been you know, interested in computers, um, the law, um, and uh, when I found out that the university wasn't just doing computing courses, um, you know, computer science, computing, um, but they are also offered computer security and computer forensics. It was perfect. It was, you know, an area which I really, uh, choosing the computer forensics, um, it was an area I, re I was really interested in and, and was delighted to be able to get onto the course. I think one of the one of the main reasons that um, university really worked for me would be uh, just trying to get all of these other this all this other knowledge that university has not just technically things like I'm going to keep going on about the placement routes and the routes to industries that the university is built uh, on years and years of experience that they from non cyber degrees the your traditional sort of engineering that they have these placements with the large companies. They have all these roots in and just being able to stand on the shoulders of giants effectively and take the university and all their roots that they have to say they've already got a link in with IBM from some of their other computer science courses. Maybe I could take a route down security with, with IBM or some of the other big blue chip companies. It's not just about the technical knowledge. It is about all of the different things that go around that and being able to work with industry and work into... At the end of the day, just your technical knowledge isn't going to be what you're getting paid for. It's going to be you as a fully rounded person. And looking back on my university degree and what I learned there, it is all of the other skills that I learned from university, the being able to work with other people and being able to work with other teams and um, building on the knowledge that's already there and the understanding that's already there to get to exactly where I wanted to be. Uh, just at the time of finishing, um, I realised, I found that there was a, the university were um, uh, advertising jobs uh, here as researchers uh, into a uh, specific area of forensics that was kind of new. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the, the project is funded by uh, Airbus Defence and Space, EADS. SCADA systems are systems that uh, automate, monitor, control a lot of the world's critical national infrastructure. Um, so your uh, oil refineries, your nuclear plants, uh, water treatment, distribution um, and a lot of these systems are old systems um, that were originally designed to operate on closed networks but now um, in the modern day are being connected to the internet, corporate networks and so they're a lot more vulnerable to uh, external attacks. So when incidents occur um, it's mandatory for, for a forensic uh, incident response to take place. Um, but because we've not really sort of looked at these areas before, it's, it's kind of new, it's, uh, it's different to traditional IT systems where 
can't basically switch off a system uh, and uh, perform your analysis that way like you would do um, in normal IT. Um, these systems have to run continuously 24-7 uh, and have been for the past 20-30 years. Um, so how do you do forensics on uh, a system that cannot be switched off? Uh, so these are the, the types of problems that we face. Some of the university education in this country is superb in, the, in this area. The University of South Wales actually is, as one of our partners, one of, the, one of the, the, the leading elements. The second point is there is a huge employment shortage. And therefore, the number of employees, gradu new graduates who can come in and hit the ground, maybe not running, but certainly not, certainly not walking very slowly, is important. And so throughout, throughout anybody's education, whether that's an apprenticeship or whether it's a university degree, I would always encourage anybody to find companies, companies like ours or, 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 or similar, and go and seek out placements. They will accept you or they should accept you with open arms. And then that way, when you come out, and I will say, if I came out and I saw a CV of somebody with a, with a, with a, a cybersecurity degree, oh, and actually during these two or three years, I worked for company A, I worked for company B, I worked for company C, um, that would be, that would be a, a differentiating factor. What a lot of people don't realise until they've worked within industry and industry with penetration testing is the clients don't really care necessarily how good you are. The bit that they see at the end is the report that you've written. So you could be the best technical person in the world. You might be able to write the best exploits. You might be able to break into boxes. No one else can. If you can't report it in a way that either A, their technical people can understand and also B, that their senior people can understand so they can look at it and say, right, here's my issue, where's my risk? This is where industry really comes into it and you're able to then take your technical skills and apply it in a way that you never thought you would be able to um, so that C-level people and managers can look at it and say, yep, I see that this is where my issue is. My technical team have been crying out for this cyber budget, but I have no idea what I'm actually looking for. If you can put it in words where they'll understand it and say, this would affect you here, 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 and you really need to do this, 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 then they can say, all right, it's worth me putting the budget in, or actually, we're all right with this risk. We don't really mind if somebody steals our photocopiers. We're more interested in all of our personal information that we store. A lot of the opportunities that are out there aren't going to come and present themselves to individuals. The individuals need to go and make those opportunities happen for themselves. I got a sniff it when, when I was at university, I got the opportunity to go and work on a placement year and that was because I went after that opportunity and I, and I made that opportunity my own. It's really key that, that students in second and third year of university courses now start to think about where they want to go, start to think about where they want to develop their careers. And the ones that we really see succeed are the guys and girls who are absolutely proactive about what they want to be and, and what they want to do and, and the ones that go out and make it happen for themselves. There are careers uh, advisors in universities. We generally prefer the students that come to us and say, I want to come and work for you because I know your brand, I know what your business is about and, I, and I've done the research and I know this about your organisation and I understand why it's a great place to come and work. It would be very easy, and believe me, it would be very easy for us to say, let's just take, let's just take all this high-end stuff, let's just do governments, let's just do critical national infrastructure, let's do big, massive blue-chip corporates. Um, and we do that. But actually, one of the reasons um, I built this the way that it is is because it is equally important to me, and in some ways, from a personal point of view, maybe a little bit more um, important to me, than actually the SMEs in the UK, and not just the UK, but the SMEs, the SMEs abroad, but let's focus on the UK, do you get the kind of support and knowledge that they need and, the, and, and the, the provision of skilled support through whatever measure that they need? Because SMEs fundamentally form the backbone, backbone of this country um, and they are the future of this country. So I care a lot about SMEs. And so I think, first of all, we do genuinely provide services and, the, and we also recognise the issues of cost. A cost that something that a blue chip company can afford isn't quite often out of the reach of a of a of a, of a small company, and we address that issue. That we address that issue too. But yes, through the cyber academy, it's a great leveler. Going through the cyber academy, a massive leveler. We have government, you know, we have government IT people, we have um, policemen, we have foreign national government organisations, we have. Our people from IT departments from SMEs and, and, and IT departments from large corporates. We have executives from blue chip com companies and executives from SMEs 
you know, operating on the same executive th threat awareness course. It's a great leveler. Um, and the fact you see those different communities, then all talking the same language, all addressing the same problems, working out solutions to the kind of problems, to my mind is, is just absolutely joyful. It bridges a whole load of gaps. And those are the kind of gaps that need to be bridged, actually, if it's cyber security, digital security is going to be addressed at its root cause across the whole of, of, of industry and government. What we seem to be finding when we're going out to industry is that there's, there's a skills gap within the IT market whereby people might have done their Microsoft certifications or their Cisco certifications and they live and breathe in this space. But because of where cyber's coming now and the attackers are getting more sophisticated, um, the knowledge that you get from these courses isn't enough for you to be able to see the world through the eyes of a hacker. So some of the courses that we run upstairs, we've got our advanced threat methodology courses and our operational digital forensics courses. These are aimed at IT professionals to enable them to see the world through a hacker's eyes, which then enables them to protect their networks better. If they can see how a hacker's going to break in, they know that they're those are the areas that they need to defend against. What we also do with that is if we see IT people who are actually really interested in this and they really like the cyber area, we have other courses like our Tiger Scheme QSDM courses, which is backed by the University of South Wales and Tiger Scheme, that we're finding that people are then, after they've been on these courses, moving from an IT profession into a cyber security profession and coming back to us to do these courses, which are accredited. The Tiger Scheme came out of a requirement from GCHQ for industry and academia to come together to work an accreditation scheme for Czech team member and Czech team leader. Tiger focuses upon the individual, the university has now taken over the responsibility for running Tiger and as part of that is engaging with industrial partners such as PGI to help us run training and assessment. Again, it's that link between the University of South Wales and industry coming together to meet a government industry need in producing people that are certified Czech team leader, Czech team member. I'm finding that the relationship between PGI and Tiger Scheme and the Tiger Scheme courses is working really well because Tiger Scheme, with its links to the University of South Wales, really brings that sort of academic side and the, the knowledge that you have to have to be able to pass these courses. And then as it's being taught by people like myself here at PGI, you're getting the industry side and the real world experience that's being taught from that, which means when you go away with your QSDM or your um, SST qualifications, You've got sort of this idea that um, you know what's happening within industry, you have the knowledge that's backed by the university, and then it's all tied up together by CSG to say that you're actually certified by the UK government at a level that you can do government penetration testing. This world moves so quickly. It moves so quickly. Um, and if you do not allow people, give them the space, the time, the equipment, the environment to keep their personal development skills up to scratch, they will very, very quickly um, become uh, irrelevant. Uh, they will be out of date and increasing it. Now, in a world that's changing so fast, you can be a brilliant penetration tester one day, six months, 12 months later, you're a little bit out of date. So that's quite scary for somebody who is quite young. In a world that is perpetually changing, how do they stay relevant? So the personal development is, is key. Secondly, it's the multi-deployability I like, uh, of people like Tim and people like a whole load of the, 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 the people I've got next to is by and large, yes, they have their specialist skills. They're, they're skills that they are extremely good at, whether that's intrusion detection analysis, whether that's malware analysis, it's forensic analysis, it's testing, whatever that may well be. But what I also encourage um, is the ability to be able to do different types of work. Because whilst however they are very, very, they are specialist skills and they're very hard skills to get, there is a whole load of overlap between them. And if you provide people exposure to and the ability to operate dealing with different client problems in a slightly different way of applying your skills, um, then one, the working environment is just more varied and it's great fun. And it keeps you as an individual aware of the, the direction that the industry and the space is going so you can help shape your own your own career accordingly and at the end of it and at the end of it you will have somebody um, who has grown through this and evolved with it Cybersecurity and computer forensics is a global market space we say to our students the companies that we're dealing with are international companies and if you're good the world is your oyster We've placed students in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. 
you meet up with students every few years when you go to various conferences and it's lovely to find out how their careers have progressed and some of our students have gone all over the world if you're good it really is a global marketplace and the world is your oyster Thank you.